And the Oscar goes to Matthew McConaughey. Dissect your success. Our failures. We dissect them so much we end up intoxicated with them to the point of disillusion. You see, happiness is an emotional response to an outcome. If I win, I will be happy. If I don't, I won't. It's an if-then, cause and effect, quid pro quo standard that we cannot sustain because we immediately raise it every time we attain it. You see, happiness demands a certain outcome. It is result reliant. And I say, if happiness is what you're after, then you're gonna be let down frequently and you're gonna be unhappy much of your time. Joy, though, joy is a different thing. It's something else. Joy is not a choice. It's not a response to some result. It's a constant. Joy is the feeling that we have from doing what we are fashioned to do. Life is not easy. It is not. Don't try to make it that way. Life's not fair. It never was. It isn't now and it won't ever be. Do not fall into the trap, the entitlement trap, of feeling like you're a victim. You are not. Get over it and get on with it. And yes, most things are more rewarding when you break a sweat to get them. So be brave. Have courage. And when you do, you get stronger, you get more aware, you get more respectful of yourself and that which you fear. My hero, that's who I chase. Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. So I turned 25, 10 years later, that same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. No, no, no. She said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero is always 10 years away. I'm never going to be my hero. I'm not going to attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. So to any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to and whoever it is we're chasing. To that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. And to that I say just keep living, huh? Thank you. You knew that there is something to be extracted from living life. How did you get that frame of reference? Like that's so useful, but I don't think most yeah. people have that. Man, I, you know, I don't know exactly where where I got it. I mean, I would say again, to call back that Australian year where I did not have a choice, where I was forced into that situation and saw the green light assets from being alone and quite lonely. Um, I do think uh, that there's great value in being alone. And if we are alone and we get bored and we don't like the company, ding, may that light go off to say, that does not mean we need to pick up our phone to get some attention or go to the bottle to, to ease the anxiety or go online to, to get some feedback to entertain ourselves. No, it's actually a great time to say, no, sit here in that discomfort long enough to go, okay, until you come out the other side to go, all right, I'm good with me again. Now, it's, it's part of that, I write about it when I, about, about traveling in general. Ideally, you don't go to a place, you don't, I always say this, don't, I don't want to leave a place I travel to until I get to the point of going, ah, I could live here. This could be my existence. And as soon as I get to that point, then I'm like, okay, you can go. Now I can go. That's the same thing in the personal journeys. Stick with it till you get through the discomfortable to uncomfortable times until you go, you know what? I can spend time with myself. I could do this. I could do this forever. Well, then it's okay to go re-engage, pick up your phone, go see your friends, go have a drink, what have you, go look for those things that are, are the other relationships in life. But hopefully not until, there's great value in not doing that until you go, I'm good with me and me for right now. Now, why do you pursue things that scare you? Why seek the role that's hard? Because it costs me something. Because it costs. It comes with a price. It's it's a bit of that line. Don't pick a fight. It's not really a fight unless you can lose it. It's not really you know. Don't. It's not really a risk unless you can lose the fight. I feel more alive in them. I have an experience in the making of them. 
I'm nervous every day I come to work. I feel like when I nail a day and I knock it and I know I did, I feel like, yes. I, get, I, I have a measure at the end of the day of like, you set out to do something, you prepared for it, you had intention and you did it. And maybe even became, found some magic in the day. That, I sleep good knowing that I accomplished that day in uh, building the architecture of a character's arc through a story. And then if I could put the whole thing together and it comes out, the whole, one whole performance turns out to be a beautiful song, an original song of that character, then I'm like, yes. And I know that I was highly responsible for that. I was not solely responsible, but the most responsible for that. And that gives me pleasure. That gives me gratification. That makes me feel, gives me significance. That gives me confidence. If I don't pull it off, and I do have a day where I'm like, oh, no, you didn't ever, and it was my fault. I still, I would rather with these kind of roles, I can look in the mirror and go, so guess who's responsible for not pulling it off? You, Conhey. Kind of, hey. In the same way, when I go, guess who's responsible for pulling off? I like knowing who, you. And 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 it was also again work that challenged the vitality of my life. Drop dramatic roles allow you, the actor to have as high of a ceiling or as low of a basement, from love to hate, from happiness to pain, as that particular actor wants to bring to it. That's what's inherently beautiful about dramas. Okay, you're the part you're playing the role how does how how is are you going to emulate that person through yourself um that is a vital thing that i feel that makes me sweat that makes me sleep better at the end of the day that gives me a sense of accomplishment i'm like yes i did what i intended to do i prepared for it was ready oh the day didn't go how i thought it was going to go but i i called audibles along the way enrolled and still told the truth on my man the character that gratification feels good Unbelievable is the stupidest word in the dictionary. Should never come out of our mouths. Think about it. To say, oh wow, what an unbelievable play. Uh, it was an unbelievable book, an unbelievable film, an unbelievable act of courage. Really? It, it may be spectacular, it may be phenomenal, most excellent or outstanding, but unbelievable? Uh-uh. Give others and yourself more credit. It just happened. You witnessed it. You just did it. Believe it. Give your obstacles credit. That there's a responsibility to freedom and that there is freedom in responsibility. You know, and that earn your way there. We remember the stuff we earn, the stuff we experience more than what the teacher tells us or what someone gives us for free. We just do. We broke a proverbial sweat on it, whether it was mental or physical or whatever. We, we, we built it. We, we understand. We felt how we got it, how we achieved it, how we got what we wanted. Those stick with us. Whether we forget them intellectually, they were written in our lineage and they build resilience and they, and, and, and they build a healthy, true optimism going forward to know that, oh, no, I've, I've, I've worked for something before and achieved it. Delayed gratification. Oh, there are choices I can make today for myself that will pay me back later in life. So there are choices we make. If you're gonna say right now, I'm gonna lie, cheat, and steal to get what I want, and I got it. I got an immediate green light for me. That's a battery-powered green light. That's not a solar-powered green light. Why? Because now, everywhere I go, I gotta look over my shoulder to see if someone's there that I lied, cheat, and stole from. And when I'm doing that, I'm stealing whose time? My time. Now I'm not freedom. I'm not free. I don't have the freedom. I didn't create freedom in my future because I chose to be an ir make an irresponsible act that I left crumbs. I've now got reasons to look over my shoulder. And the more things we do to create in our, in our future that we got to look over our shoulder, the more of our most precious thing we have in our life's time that we're stealing from ourselves. So it's not puritanical. It's just like, it's actually self-serving. It's a very selfish choice. Um, and, and I'm a fan of the word selfish. I've read, helped redefine it. Um, but I believe that there are selfish choices we can make that are the most selfless, that there are selfless choices that we can make that are the most selfish choices. Those two are not a contradiction, and we see them that way. Responsibility is, is appreciation of a past. It's building of a lineage. It's investing in ourselves. It's investing in something we started to build yesterday that we want to take into tomorrow. There's a response that gives us freedom.